Hi everyone. Today we are going to learn about liver cirrhosis. So what exactly is liver cirrhosis? It's a condition where the liver gets scarred over time because of long term damage. Little by little the healthy liver cells are replaced by hard scar tissue. This scarring makes it harder for the liver to do its normal jobs like filtering toxins, producing proteins and helping with digestion. You can think of it like this. Imagine a soft healthy sponge. Now picture it turning into a hard stiff stone. That is what happens to the liver in cirrhosis. Now let us talk about what causes liver cirrhosis. One of the most common causes is chronic alcohol abuse. Drinking heavily over many years can damage the liver cells. Another big cause is hepatitis B and C. These are viral infections that can inflame the liver and lead to long-term damage. Then we have non-alcoholic fatty liver disease or NAFLD. This happens when fat buildups in the liver often due to obesity or diabetes even if you don't drink alcohol. There is also autoimmune hepatitis. This is when the body's own immune system mistakenly attacks liver cells. And lastly, genetic disorders like Wilson's disease where harmful substances like copper build up in the liver. It mainly damages liver, eyes and brain. So as you can see, liver cirrhosis can have many causes not just alcohol. Let's look at how liver cirrhosis actually develops or in other words the pathophysiology. It all starts with continuous damage to the liver, maybe from alcohol, infections or fat buildup. That damages causes inflammation and the liver tries to heal itself. But with repeated injury, this healing creates scar tissue and over time more and more of it build ups. This scar tissue blocks blood flow inside the liver and because of that the liver can't do its job properly, which is when the symptoms starts to show. Also, the blocked blood flow increases pressure in the liver's blood vessels. This is called portal hypertension and it can lead to serious problems like swelling and bleeding. Now let's look at the signs and symptoms of liver cirrhosis. In the early stages, many people don't feel anything at all, no symptoms. That is why it is often called a silent disease at first. In late stage, people may feel very tired or weak all the time. The skin and eyes may turn yellow, this is called jaundice and it happens when the liver can't process bilirubin properly. Swelling in the legs or belly is also common due to fluid buildup. Some people bruise or bleed easily because the liver isn't making enough clotting proteins. And in more severe cases, people may experience confusion or forgetfulness, this is called hepatic encephalopathy caused by toxins building up in the brain. So how is liver cirrhosis diagnosed? It usually starts with blood tests, especially liver function tests which check how well your liver is working. Next doctors often use imaging techniques like an ultrasound or CT scan to look at the size, shape and texture of the liver. Sometimes they may do a liver biopsy that's when a small piece of liver tissue is taken and locked it under microscope to check for scarring. And there is also newer non-invasive test called FibroScan. This test measures how stiff the liver is and stiffness is a sign of scarring. Let's talk about how liver cirrhosis is treated. Now there is no complete cure but the goal is to slow down the progression and manage symptoms. First it is essential to treat the cause, stop drinking alcohol completely, this is crucial. If it is due to hepatitis B or C, doctors use antiviral medicines. If it is fatty liver, controlling weight, diabetes and cholesterol is the key. Next we focus on managing symptoms and complications with specific medication. For autoimmune diseases, medications like prednisolone help reduce inflammation. Diuretics like spironolactone are used to reduce swelling in the legs or belly. Lactulose and sometimes rifaximin help treat confusion caused by toxin buildup that is specifically hepatic encephalopathy. To reduce the risk of bleeding from varices, beta blockers like propanolol are used and patients often need vitamin supplements like vitamin K, zinc and B complex. Infections are common in cirrhosis so antibiotics may be given when needed. And finally, in very advanced cases where the liver is badly damaged, a liver transplant might be the only option left. Now let's talk about prevention because stopping liver cirrhosis before it starts is the best approach. Limit your avoid alcohol completely, your liver can only take so much over time. 
get vaccinated against hepatitis b it is safe effective and protects your liver practice safe sex and good hygiene to reduce the risk of viral hepatitis eat a balanced healthy diet exercise regularly and mainly a healthy weight this helps prevent fatty liver disease and if you are having a risk factors like hepatitis or obesity make sure to get regular checkups to catch liver problems early Cirrhosis can lead to some serious complications if it is not managed well. Let us look at the most common ones. First there is ascites that is when fluid build ups in the belly making it look swollen and uncomfortable. Then we have variceal bleeding. Cirrhosis increases pressure in the vein and these swollen veins can burst leading to vomiting blood or passing black stools. Hepatic encephalopathy is another serious one. It is when toxins build up in the brain causing confusion, sleepiness or even coma in severe cases. Cirrhosis also increases the risk of liver cancer especially if the cause is hepatitis. And over time if the liver gets too damaged it can lead to complete liver failure where the liver can no longer support life. Did you know the liver can regenerate but with repeated damage the scarring becomes permanent that's why catching liver disease early is so important and that wraps up our quick overview of liver cirrhosis if you found this helpful please give it a thumbs up subscribe to the channel and drop a comment if you have any questions or thoughts take care of the liver it's your body's natural detox powerhouse